Welcome everyone to the video that will give you the confidence and control to go faster, ride steeper, more challenging trails, and do stunts that will have me doing this face. All it takes is getting better at one tiny little, super simple, not at all complicated, really basic thing. So hit that bell button, subscribe to the thumb icon, smash that comment section, and stay tuned till the end of the video, where I probably won't tell you the secret and convince you to invest in my new cryptocurrency, Skidcoin. Screw it, I'm, I'm too excited. It's breaking. Let's get better at breaking. It's breaking. I went into insane detail on this subject back in series one, episode five. So if you've not seen that, go refresh the memory, scrub up on the theory. Series two, it's all about the practical, putting it into practice, actually going outside and improving your riding. We'll begin with step one. Make sure they work. If your brakes have nice, firm, consistent bite points and plenty pad material left in, you're laughing. Ah! If your brakes are pulling to the bar, leaking oil, honking like a goose, grinding like steel backing plate against rotor, well, fix it if you know how, or get that rig in for a service because the number one step to being a better bike rider is taking care of said bike. Step two, get familiar with which brake does what. This might seem obvious to some, but I've met a lot of people that just pull each lever at the same time and don't really know which is which without having to stop and think about it. It's going to be important later that you know which is which, so let's fix that. Here in the UK, our front brakes are on the right hand side of the handlebar and our rear brakes are on the left. It's also known as the correct way. <laughs> Ah! It's gonna cause a little bit of sauce in the comments, that. Ah! Whichever way round you run them, you can do a simple drill or game that I just invented while writing the script. It's called Skidendo. Skidendo! <laughs> this is really top-notch content. It's not obvious, that's a mashup of skid, the classic timeless maneuver of locking up your back wheel to slide it along the ground, causing irreparable damage to your tire and the ground below, and the word endo, the also timeless classic of locking up your front wheel while smoothly shifting your weight forward to gracefully lift the rear wheel off the ground. But hopefully not too far, as that would be quite dangerous. Oh yeah! Skidendo. You play it by riding along at walking pace, then have a friend shout, skid or endo. Skid! Endo. Skidendo. It's fun for all the family. Endo, skid. Endo, skid. Endo, skid. Remember He's a time? high performance athlete, everybody. On purpose Skid. over the bars. <laughs> <laughs> Endo. <laughs> <laughs> One more final ride. Drift. <laughs> yes. Step three, modulation. Now, I've seen some brilliant examples of modulation in my time, including the organic ABS replica. ABS on a vehicle works by braking and releasing many times a second with an array of sensors and pumps, allowing the wheel to continue turning so that control of the vehicle can be maintained. Humans are far too slow, inaccurate, and squishy for that kind of behavior. <laughs> and it usually causes a cascading ripple of successively larger and larger skids as panic sets in. Modulation is the smooth and controlled adjustment of braking force to maintain rotation of the wheels and control of the bicycle. This is very hard to master, but there is a game to help you work on this. Find a long, consistent slope, path, gravel road, or something that is steep enough that if you were to only use your back brake, you would very easily lock up the back wheel. Your goal is to try and control your speed with just the back brake without skidding. It might take a while to find the perfect bit of ground for this, but it's a bloody good challenge. Set off at a slow pace, only using the back brake to control your speed. If this is easy, then find a steeper slope. Once you find the perfect bit of ground, you'll start to lock up and pick up speed. Work on trying to apply the maximum amount of braking power without locking up. You'll probably pick up speed, but that's fine. The goal is to go as slow as you can without skidding. If the wheel locks up, 
back off the pressure. Once it rolls, ease back on the pressure. If you're struggling to tell, get the phone out, set it somewhere stationary so you can see who can do it the slowest. Step four, weight distribution. If you have watched episode five from season one, you know all about the weight shift required when braking. Yep, you fully understand that, you watched it. Well, you can also fine tune the grip you have on each wheel by controlling how much weight you put through them. Remember the previous challenge? Do that again. But this time, experiment by leaning forward and you should lose grip and probably skid more. <laughs> then try and lean all the way back and the tire should grip better, allowing you to slow down and maybe even stop on that same slope. Now for the important bit, it's time to try this with the front brake. This is where the big differences are made as most people don't utilize the front brake to its optimum potential. Oh, I don't trust it. Oh, oh, I don't trust it. If you can learn to put weight into that front wheel, modulate that bad boy like a champ, you will unlock the control to ride steep tracks. Get back to that steep slope and this time use that front brake. Get your weight up on top of those bars and try to smoothly control the speed. Shift too far forward and you might find your back wheel lifting, which means you're putting 100% of the weight into that front wheel for maximum grip. If you don't panic, you can just keep that going. Congratulations, that's a stoppy. Unless you're going for style points, I'd bring that weight back just a little bit and keep both wheels on the deck. You can take this drill further and try to ride some bits of track with only your front brake, but remember, if at any point things get out of hand, ease off the front brake, return to using both of them. Remember, if you're not sure if you're doing it to crack out the camera, check. Step five, braking zones. We'll get back to using both brakes at the same time now and begin to experiment with those braking zones. The first drill will be with cornering as it's the main thing you need to slow down for and the easiest to practice. Find a turn with a fast run in that requires some braking and has a nice clear run out of the turn. Now let's take your newfound braking control and practice late braking. It's not necessary to brake super late, but learning how to do it will give you the confidence that you can slow down whenever you need to. So set up a camera that captures where you would normally start braking, the corner and the exit of the turn. Set a start point for where you're going to set off so you can either release the brakes and roll in or try and pedal about the same amount. You want to try and have consistent speed into the turn. This is it, it's my start line. Ride the turn from this start point how you normally would. Make a mark where you started braking. You might have left tire marks where you started or just make your best guess. Yeah, that's where I started braking. Now, make a mark a bit closer to the turn. Roll in from the same point and try to stay off the brakes until your marker. Slow down for the turn, cruise around it. Keep making the braking point later and later until you feel you are too fast to do the turn properly. Oh yeah, so that was potentially too far. Check the video to see the difference of the entrance speed into the turn. Now we need to work on the not braking drill to get this corner perfect. Take the rule from the vision when cornering in episode three and find the tightest, hardest, or slippiest part of the corner. Make a marker just before that point and try to release your brakes at that marker. The hardest point is the bit that every lap I've slipped and dabbed. Roll clips. Oh. <laughs> Me, that corner's hard. <laughs> so that is the hardest bit of the corner. So I need to be not braking there, which is extremely hard. So I've got my light braking, but now I'm gonna slow down enough that I can get off the brakes there. I'd recommend forgetting about your late braking marker for the snow and actually slow down more than usual as you practice this getting off the brakes. If you're not sure if you stayed off the brakes, you can do the finger point to really exaggerate it. It makes it easy to spot when checking on camera too. Check out the video. Make sure your weight is centered and that you're still looking through to the exit of the turn like you practiced from the last episode. Like the vision episode, try bringing the marker further and further back to try and find that sweet spot for getting off the brakes and looking through the turn. The goal is to feel confident and controlled while being fully off the brakes in the turn. 
Now, try to blend those two together. Use your favorite release marker and adjust your late breaking marker to match. Come in fast, brake hard and late, then get cleanly off the brakes at that marker and flow through the turn. It works! So remember, make sure those brakes are working perfectly, learn which brake is which, develop your modulation, play with your weight distribution and hone in your braking zones. Pick the things from this video that you feel will make a difference for your riding. Make a plan, get out there with your mates or on your own and have some fun improving your skills. Get the most out of those brakes and ride trails with more confidence and control than ever before. Film it, track your progress. Tell us about it on Pinkbike and social media by tagging at Pinkbike, hashtag how to bike. Let's try and encourage everyone to get out there, learn something new. Good luck out there, we'll see you soon. Ah! It's magic. Whoa! Oh. I don't know what I'm gonna do. I gotta do something. I've built up pressure, are you ready? Uh, oh, it wasn't as good as I thought it was gonna be. And do stunts that will have me doing this face. This face. <laughs> Three, two, one.